Hello, uh, I'm Richard Raffin. Uh, in this video you can see me make this little green turned pot out of elm. Uh, it's cross grained so that presents a few cutting problems. Um, I used a grooving tool to make these sets of grooves uh, and this was hollowed using a square and scraper. And it's got three little stubby feet so that it always stands square, doesn't rock around. So this is more or less square, not particularly good. Uh, I've got some jaws which will um, open that wide. These are large sharp jaws on a, uh, on a Vicmark 100 chuck. So, so and it's gripping pretty well most of the way around. So I'm still gonna bring that up just for security. And this is a uh, it's basically face work. The grain is running across here, so I'm going to use a bowl gouge to rough down. In fact, my usual half inch spindle gouge will probably be better. Yeah. at this stage is a cylinder, a true cylinder. just to true it up. At this stage, I'm not quite sure if I've decided which is going to be the top and which is the bottom. Um, still a slight flat there and I'm going to have a white top to the whole thing so um, that's fine. Because this is green and it's going to warp, I'm going to leave it on three little feet. So I'll we'll just take the, the bottom out. I'm going to turn this in the chuck and it will be reversed at some stage. There will be chuck marks on here. Um, yep, and just cope with them at the tail end. So this will now go right back into the chuck. This is trued up, this is trued. It's unlikely to come out of this chuck, but you never know. And then the shear cut. And so there's
there's my embryo cup so you can see pretty well what it's going to uh, what it's going to look like and with the grain really running that way or it's curved around a bit there I should get a bit of distortion it'll lean slightly that way by the look of it um, so that can go back into the chuck and uh, we'll get hollowing and I'm not going to grip it all the way down so that'll be just less I have to turn off later got that to help me yeah, in fact we would be would be able to uh, help me true it up if I'd made a hole in the first place I'll have that in about 15 millimeters into the chuck should be fine uh, that's not running quite as true as I thought it would so true it up Slight lump there. So, really, do I want the whole thing tapered slightly or do I want it curved like that? Uh, I think I, I'll just take this out for the moment. Just trying to find the edge on the tool. There we are. Another way of dealing with that would have been to use the, uh, the shear scraper up on edge and just go across. I've got to remember this is cross grain, so the smaller diameter, the more difficult to uh, cut the grain cleanly. going to have beads down the outside um, and I think I might get those done before I do the hollowing. So I was going to cut these with a gouge but I think I'll have some sets of beads with my little grooving tool which uh, come in with the tool silty down, just drop the handle a bit to pivot the edges into the wood. now for the hollowing. So first off uh, drill a depth hole, just a little starting hole for it. Going all the way down to the end of the flute pretty much.
No, this is a three quarter inch, three eighths thick scraper. You know, there's a slight angle to start with. Just to get down to the center of it. Um, have the rest just above center so only this corner long side of the uh, scrape is in contact with the wood that with the that is how far down I'm going go down as steadily as possible and just curve it slightly out towards the bottom by easing the handle away from it. do with a bit more weight in the in the tool so I'm going to use the the one inch just transfer the magnet over Down at the very bottom, I've got to bring the corner of the tool in at s just uh, to the left of center. I'll come up through center and then get the corner in and drag it across, and that should give me a smooth bottom. slight little ridge down in the corner and I just just need to see just need to see qu quite what my width is at the bottom 
as opposed to the top. So I'm about an eighth of an inch narrower at the bottom so I'm going to take another cut in from this and just try and widen that out a little bit. Now that is chattering very slightly because I'm a long way over the rest. Vibration. And that sound is really wood uh, getting in the way of the cut. So take that away and should have a different noise. very slight radius on the end of the tool so that I can't get both corners into the wood at once. So you just use the middle of the curve to come up through center. You feel that. take another eighth of an inch cut down the bottom and that's proving a little bit difficult with this tool. Um, no, I haven't got anything else. No, I've just got to pick that up halfway down, just get that corner into the wood and just go for, go for it steadily. go in there I can feel a little shoulder. The whole tool is vibrating, it's really not quite strong enough. It looks looks pretty solid but not quite as solid as it might be and that's partly I think because I've got this into a wooden uh, insert inside the metal handle. So, let's have another go with this one. Oh, right down at the bottom, it wasn't happy, and that time I caught, just trying to swing it around a bit and caught the right wing. So I've now got to come from centre and across. And I'm now down about an eighth of an inch more than my depth hole, so I'm running into where the foot is. slight ridge. I've got a, um, a little mesa, a little hump in the middle which is about to go away. They never take much those little humps. And 
want to get right into the corner. Get rid of the extra little ridge there was there. Some of you will be wondering why I haven't sharpened the side and the reason I haven't sharpened the side is because the more you do it you lose the shape of the tool uh, but I might just hone the top and get a little bit of a burr on the side. answer. Uh, so as you can see it's uh, pretty clean in the bottom. There's a bit of picked up grain on the side grain as uh, always is very difficult to get that and that will uh, have to sand out. Uh, my fingers don't reach the bottom uh, so I use a stick, um, half dowel and starting off with 80 grit uh, so I can get at the bottom all right so that goes uh, into the stick there. It's just got a slip done on the bandsaw that goes round and that's what I'm sanding with. Good. Yep. Right, so I now need to get rid of the chuck marks at the end, which means that comes round. If I'm very lucky, the jaws will fit in there, and I'm not very lucky. So that's going to have to go over a, uh, basically over a chuck, over a jam chuck and a smaller chuck. I hope it'll go over these jaws. If not, I go down to another chuck. That will be fine. And what I need is some non-slip cloth to go around it. So open the jaws up slightly. Start in there, all the way around, and uh, doesn't quite want to finish in there. It's rather too exactly, but okay. the L stock comes up with a pad. This one is hardwood and that's all true. I 
want this running true because I'm going to make some more grooves. And back to the half inch spindle gouge. originally with the shear scraper so just drop the rest very slightly shove in some beads now these aren't exactly the same so I've really got to do this upside down to get the matching set I haven't done this before So that gets sanded. This isn't getting any finish at the moment because it's all green and it needs to dry out. That broadly is on three tight. No marks on the inside. So there's the basic pot. Now I need to uh, mark the mark the bottom. So the grain is running across this way, and I just need to divide, get three points. So there's the first one. You do this with dividers. If you remember your geometry at school, you take the radius. There's the center. That's the radius. And I'm going to work off this little shoulder here. And from there to there will be about the same. So that's where my feet are going to be on these lines here. And I just need to cut away a little bit. And I'm going to go down to uh, the middle of each set, which I can eyeball. Go down to there. Lost it. It's about there anyway. And normally I've done this sort of thing with a sanding pad. And I'll finish it off with that, but I thought I'd try this spiky ball which I've had for years and I'm just going to leave slightly wider feet than usual and after this it's all kind of freehand now, that's really doing quite a nice job but I can see what would be better it would be a cylindrical version of that so I shall try and find one of those Oh, a cylindrical version would be ideal. Unfortunately, the camera is where my head would normally be, so I shall move the camera. Right, now I can see what I'm doing working down to that line. Got my hand on the T rest to steady it up. see this would be a lot easier with a little cylindrical cutter or sander because that would just be aligned with the center I could just swing it around. Now get into the sander. So 
This is 120 grits. Another way of doing this would be with a, uh, a 60 grit sanding disc. That would be a very efficient way of doing it. So a little wider feet have gone. They're now back to what they normally are, more pointy. I go from the uh, 120 grit straight to the 240. From here it goes into the microwave. A uh, piece this thick will think this is probably approaching um, five millimeters. Approaching five millimeters. And so that will have, uh, I'll try it on two minutes first, but I keep a very careful eye on it in case it gets too hot. I want it to come out too hot to handle but not actually burning. I've just heard a little expulsion of steam. I can hear it. There is a little bit of air underneath the feet, so I might even tilt it so it just steams off a little faster. So I'll let that cool. Um, and then put it in again for another, not for two minutes, uh, I'll put it in for about 90 seconds. And lurching slightly to one side. <laughs> 